My family and I recently flew to Florida together. Um, and that's something that we try to do every spring or summer, just kind of get away together as a family. We don't get a lot of specific family time together throughout the year, so we really look forward to it for that reason. And honestly, I really look forward to it for another reason. It gives me just a few days, if nothing else, gives me a few days just to escape the crazy busyness of life. Hey, has anybody flown recently, or, or let's just open it up. Anyone ever flown on a plane before? Just raise your hand. I, I mean, okay, obviously most of us. There are some of us, though, right, that haven't. And maybe it's because you're terrified of flying. Maybe it's you just haven't had the opportunity. I hope that you have the opportunity soon um, because, man, flying is, is just a really cool experience for sure. Um, so that's for those who haven't flown. I hope you get to experience that. But for those who have flown, on a commercial airline at least, what always, I know you're going to know the answer to this, by the way, but what always happens um, but sometime before takeoff, like what happens? The, f- the flight attendant does some kind of demonstration or presentation in the aisle, and it, it's, well, I'll tell you what, just check this out. Pressure, oxygen masks will drop automatically. While remaining seated with your seatbelt fastened, pull down on the mask or the red streamer to start the flow of oxygen. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and put the elastic band over your head. Then pull the straps to tighten and breathe normally. Remember to always put your own mask on first before helping others. Know that oxygen is flowing even if the bag doesn't inflate. There we go. Now, the best part The part that always, it's hard to talk with the sound, okay? Um, The part that always catches my attention is when they say specifically, hey, make sure you put your own mask on first. Now, why why would they say that? Because they know, the airlines know this. Um, Most of us, not all of us, but most of us, we're gonna just react, okay? And if you're flying with a loved one especially, you're gonna try and help them with their mask first, all right? But again, that's exactly why they say that because the airlines know, listen, unless or unless you put your own mask on first, you're not gonna be able to help anybody else with their mask. Unless you get oxygen for yourself, you're not gonna be able to help anyone else with their oxygen. Now, being on an airplane, if and when those masks drop down from the ceiling, listen, that's, that's a situation that you just never expect to be in. But it's also one of those situations in life where your natural reaction might be, you might think it's best, but it might not be the wisest way to go. And that might relate perfectly to your marriage. I know it relates perfectly to mine, all right? Nowadays, so many marriages and the people in them are just crazy busy. There's millions of examples, but here's just one. And this is just, I'm kind of just taking it from my life and just, just putting it on full display. So you can relate to this. You can laugh at me. You have permission to do all, all of the above, all right? But, but here's what crazy busy looks like for some people. Waking up early, getting the kids ready for school, right? Getting them off to school, which is always a little hectic. And then you go to work and you have a busy work day, kind of stressful if we're honest, right? And then you finally get off of work, but you got to race home because you know what? You got to get dinner on the table for your kid. Actually, we don't have time. We're going through the drive through today. So you go through the drive through and then you take them to their practices, which are not in the same place, by the way. They're all in different locations. So you run your kids there and then it's quick. All right, Kappa, just, just kind of like open the van door, the side van door while we're still kind of rolling, like hop out. We don't have time. Dad's got to get to the meeting or mom's got to get to the meeting. So you go to this meeting, right? And then, oh man, we got to leave early. I got to race home. I got to, or not race home, but I got to pick up the kids from practice. And then we got to race home because it's bath night. And the kids, they haven't had a bath all week, all right? Or they haven't showered all week. And especially after running around outside, it's getting kind of stinky and all. Like, we got to get bath night. So you do that and quick get them off into bed. And then you're like, oh man, here, I'm getting to bed. Finally, no, you're not because you got to pack lunches for the next day. In fact, you know what? I've just had it. I've had just one of those days. So we're not doing the lunch thing. They're going to have hot lunch tomorrow. That's fine. But I'm going to bed. So you get in bed just with enough time to get your six, six and a half hours of sleep, and then wake up and do it all over again. That's crazy busy, right? Like, can anyone relate to that? Maybe, maybe like now we're in the past. I mean, man, that's been Nicole and I, that's been our life for like the past 15 years, okay? So we're ready for that, like to exit that season, and I hope that happens, all right? But man, man, I'm looking forward to that. Crazy busyness not only distracts us, but crazy busyness um, in our families and in marriage, what we're talking about specifically today, not only distracts us, but it blinds us. It blinds us to the best things that God has for us, all right? Because no matter what your marriage looks like, if you have a kid similar to what I just kind of ran through, um, or if you don't have kids, right, yet, or you had kids, or they're growing, I mean, whatever it is, 
Whatever your marriage looks like, maybe you're not even married yet. Like, I hope you're able to soak this in by God's grace and apply it maybe a few years from now, okay? But whatever your marriage looks like, problems are always present, all right? And crazy busyness can always creep in. This weekend at Fox River, I know, I know this for a fact, and you might know it too, God has something very special for each one of us, even if we're not married, but, but especially those who are married, and super especially for those of us who are crazy busy in our marriage. So let's go to God together with anticipation, like, God, I hope you're going to do this, but also expectation, because I know you are going to do this, to receive those good and godly gifts that he has for us. Let's go to him together in prayer at this time. Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for each one of us here this morning across all of our Fox River campuses and online, of course. Um, God, thank you for our Fox River family members. Thank you for our guests who are with us today. God, I'm so thankful that we're here, able to be together and worship together and hear from you together. We do wanna hear from you, Lord. Help us to understand what you're trying to tell us, God, that we might respond to your good news of good grace, that we might choose to follow you after having spent time with one another, but, but Lord, also after having spent time with you. God, that you would be glorified, that the name of Jesus Christ would be magnified in our hearts, but also in our lives moving forward. We pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, hey, let's turn to Ephesians chapter five. All right, Ephesians chapter five, that's where we're going today. As you turn to Ephesians chapter 5 in your Bible like I did or on your digital device of choice, Ephesians chapter 5, let's just put a few details out there, make sure that we're all on the same page, at least a little bit, right? Ephesians, or the whole letter of Ephesians, all six chapters, they're written by a guy named Paul, the Apostle Paul, in fact, you may have heard of him. He's writing this letter to his friends, all right, in the city of Ephesus. It's a Greek city, all right, and there's a church there. He's writing to his friends. And he wants to bless his friends, all right? He wants those who are married especially, he wants what's best for them in their marriage. He wants what's best for them when it comes to being able to glorify God in the, the greatest ways. And he wants them to receive the greatest gift that God has for them in their marriage. So let's get into it. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse number 21. Here we go. Submit. Somebody say submit. Ready? Submit. Okay. All right, beautiful word, all right? It doesn't roll off the tongue too nice sometimes, but it's a beautiful word. Okay, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Mega observation number one. Yeah, I know, we just did one verse, I get it. Right. Mega observation number one. Paul, because we're not stopping here, we're going to keep reading. But, but Paul, everything Paul is about to pen, right, the verses that come after, it's, it's completely fueled by and it's flavored with this word, submit, all right? This idea of submission, all right? So God is telling the church through the Apostle Paul, listen, husbands, you need to submit to your wives, submit to their needs. Wives, you need to submit to your husbands and submit to his needs, all right? And in the same way that you respect God, in the same way that you revere him, right? You have reverence for him. In the same way that you submit, as a part of the church, you submit to Jesus, that's the same way that you need to respect and revere and submit to one another. See, this is not a to-do list. We're about to go through some things. This is not a to-do list. This is not three ways to make your marriage better. It's not, not, and I'm not against those things, by the way. If you have three ways to make my marriage better, I'm all ears. Let's talk afterwards, okay? But, but there's nothing wrong with those things. It's just that's, that's not what Paul is writing, okay? Rather, here's what Paul is writing about. The following passage is how to put Jesus at the center of your marriage relationship, all right? If you've ever wondered, how do I worship Jesus outside of church, all right, on the weekend? How, how do I do it? Or if you've ever heard somebody say, you've got to walk out your faith, you've got to walk by faith. You ever heard somebody say that, and you think, like, man, how do I do that? How do I do that, um, you know, in real life? We're about to find out what that looks like, okay? Listen, this is how we do it. Shout out to Montel Jordan. All right, let's roll. Verse number 22. Wives, submit 
to your husbands, or submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Hmm. Tall order. Husbands, you're not off the hook. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in this same way. Husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body. Really? Prove it. Oh, okay. But they feed and care for their own body. You feed yourself. You care for yourself. Okay, listen. Just as Christ does the church. For we're members of his body. He cares for us. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Just like Jesus left heaven. Right? And came to get his wife. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. Doesn't make sense up to this point until Paul wrote Ephesians 5. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. Mega observation number two. According to verse 32, there's something profound happening here. People have wondered, what's marriage all about? Why did Jesus come down from heaven to earth? Like, what, what's really going on there? Two separate questions. Paul's like, listen, this is the same thing. It's the same question. Mega observation number two is this. Earthly marriage between a man and a woman, right, is designed by God himself, is designed to be a picture of the heavenly marriage between Jesus and his bride, the church. I'm going to say it again. Earthly marriage is designed to be a picture, something we can see and feel and experience so that we can get an idea of the heavenly marriage between Jesus and his wife, the church. Hmm. Notice how the husband is called to care for his wife, just like Jesus cares for his wife, the church. Notice how the wife is called to respect and submit to her husband, just as the church respects and submits to her husband, Jesus, in a spiritual sense question. Let's just state the obvious. Let's put it out there, make sure all of us are tracking and on the same page. How in the world is a husband or wife supposed to do what God has called them to do if they don't know who God is and they don't know what God loves like? How, they, they don't, how are you supposed to do it? God, you call, here's an example. Hey, Bill, I need you to paint like Jeffrey. Who's Jeffrey? Uh, can I see some of his painting? I want to see like kind of like because if I know who Jeffrey is and I see some of his work, maybe, maybe I'll be able to paint like him. See how that works? Like if I'm called to do something, I need to know some context. I got to know some details. If we're called to love like God, if we're called to respect and submit like the church does to God, I need to know who God is. I need to know what he loves like. In the crazy busyness of marriage, all right, it doesn't take much to get there if you're not there already. In the crazy business of marriage, we must prioritize our own personal walk with God. We must know God. We must know what he's like. We have to know that first. Here's another way of saying it. You got to put your own mask on first. You have to. There's just no way around. It's not selfishness. It's just the way it works. Okay? Now, I want to brag about my wife for, for a minute here. All right? Nicole, she wakes up early in the morning. All right? to put her mask on. We'll get to that in a second, all right? She wakes up early in the morning to spend time with Jesus in the word and in prayer, all right? She, she wakes up way before, all right, way before her husband wakes up late and fails to help with the kids, all right? She wakes up way before the dog begins barking at the first ray of sunshine coming over the horizon, right? And starts barking at everything and then vomits the dog food on the only area rug we have in the house. Like, like okay, before that. And, and, and she, way, way before the work emails and texts and phone calls start coming in, listen, she's spending time with Jesus. She's putting her own mask on. See, she, she's all ready for the crazy business that's gonna come at her for that day because she's already put her 
mask on. Jesus equals oxygen. That's, that's the metaphor, the analogy we're working with today. So you got to get your own oxygen first. You got to get Jesus for yourself first. That is the, the very first step. You have to. You got to find a way. Your personal time with God and your personal devotion toward God, like, like it's so important. And it's going to directly affect the quality of your marriage relationship. All right? Which is just, there's just, again, there's just no way around it. So what are some of the simple ways, some of the simple next steps that you can take in an effort to move toward God or spend more time with him? If you're a morning person like Nicole, man, use that gift, all right? Not everybody has that gift where your eyes open in the morning and you're like more than 1% awake, okay? Like not everybody has that. You're just up and at them. Use that gift that God has given you. Spend some time in the Word. Maybe verse of the day on the Bible app. If you don't have the Bible app, get the Bible app. We're going to mention it a few times today. It's a beautiful resource that God has given us with modern technology. Okay, get the Bible app. Verse of the day, every morning, you could start your day like that. Maybe you're an overachiever. Maybe you're like, I'm new to the game, but I just want to, I want to hit it hard, okay? I'm doing chapter of the day, okay? Maybe you do a chapter of the day. That's fine. That'd be a beautiful thing. Just spend a few time, a few minutes of time in the Word with God. All right, maybe, maybe you could do this. I encourage you to do this as well. Is, is what if you were to dedicate or allocate five minutes to prayer? Now, you might hear that and say, like, that sounds like a good idea, Bill, but five minutes, that's, that's a long time. I don't know if I could pray for five minutes. It's a really long time. It can be intimidating. I remember a few years back hearing stuff like that. I'm like, five minutes, man, that's a long, what am I going to say for five minutes? Okay. So here's, you just got to put some framework with it. And all of a sudden it's, it's actually really simple. Um, and, and really it's a blessing too. So, so I would encourage you to do this. If, if that five minute thing is kind of intimidating or, or, or whatever, right? Start off by thanking God. Thank God for who he is. Just, just talk to him about himself. All right. He's all, God, thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being being so loving. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you for being so kind towards me. Like, like you don't have to be so nice to me, but you are, God. Thank you for that. Thank you that you're working in my life. Just thank him and praise him in that way. That, that'll, I mean, this explanation alone is taking five minutes, right? So, so and, then, and then, um, then move into that, that asking for help. Because I know some of the things are going to happen today. God, I know I'm going to need your help at work because you know, I got that project that I'm working on, and, and man, I'm kind of, you know, I just, I just need your grace. I need your help in, in moving forward with that. Or I got this presentation today. God, help me with that. Or, or that difficult person. You know, we just don't see eye to eye. We just don't get along that well. Um, God, help me to, 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 to really just kind of get that grace in so I can give that grace out and, and not just kind of lose my mind like I do sometimes with, when it comes to that person. God, help me to be Christ-like in, in that interaction or that relationship because I know it's good. Right? So you just, you, you thank God, and then you... Ask him for the help you need for that day, right? And, and I'm telling you, five minutes, it'll go like that. It's going to make a huge difference. That's if you're a morning person. If you're not a morning person, whenever you wake up, what if you were to do those two things? That would be cool, all right? Um, that would be really, really cool. That would be really, really effective. Or if when you wake up, again, you're just kind of like groggy for a while, um, then finding ways to spend time with Jesus in his word and spend time in prayer through him, throughout, or with him throughout the day. Look for some of those opportunities. Now, you might be able to know by now um, that I am not a morning person at all. And, and you might also be able to figure out that my life, all right, my, my married life in particular, is crazy busy. So here's some of the ways that I have found, and some of them took a long time, by the way, but, but I want to share them with you. I want to give you like a spiritual life hack, okay, like a shortcut. All right, here's some of the things that I found to be great blessings in me when it comes to um, spending time with, with Jesus in the Word and in prayer. I listen to a lot of audio Bible, okay? I listen to, to the audio Bible, again, on the Bible app, okay? I do that while I'm getting ready for the day. I'm spending time with Jesus in the Word, right? Um, when I drive to work, most of the time, I have the audio Bible on as I'm driving in, right? As I leave work and I'm coming back home, I have the audio Bible on again. Do I still take phone calls? Of course, all right? All, all of that, right? When the police are pulling me over, do I turn it off and turn it down? Yes, I do that, okay? Just, it's dangerous. You can't entertain every thought that comes in your mind, okay? Learn from, anyways, okay. All right, so, so I spend time in the audio Bible. When it comes to prayer, 
here's what I found. I'm not proud of this, but it's just, you know what? I've just come to accept this is who I am. I just don't remember things like most things most times, okay? I need reminders. So I set alarms in my phone to pray. See, and it drives Nicole crazy because I got like all these alarms are constantly going off. And it's just like, she's like, turn the phone. Anyways, she doesn't yell, but that, that's how she feels inside. Like, come on, the thing's going off again. But, but specific alarms go off at specific times to remind me to pray for specific people in specific ways. So when the alarm goes off, it's like, oh, yeah, I got to pray for so-and-so about this. That's cool. And I need that. I just know that I need that. So, so I set alarms in my phone to pray. All right? And what God has taught me over the years, I did not do this right away. Please hear me when I say this. All right? But I've learned this over the years. God is faithful, right? So when I have a conversation with somebody, whether it's in person or on the phone or um, email or, or text or whatever, um, what God is, is, is showing me is, hey, there's an opportunity there to pray for that person. Um, maybe even about what the correspondence has to deal with, right? So, and, and even with strangers, um, people, you know, I see somebody on the sidewalk walking down the street, somebody driving in the car next to me, somebody walking in the subway or out of subway eating a sub. Man, I'm hungry. I wish I had one of those. But once I get past that thought, um, God is, is showing me, hey, you can pray for that person. That's an opportunity, right? And, and what, I'm, what I'm finding is this. God is teaching me to talk to him about everything. And that's really neat. Now, every time we follow Jesus, every time we say yes to him, because God is so good, here's, here's what he does. He hits us with collateral blessings. Like, he blindsides us with blessings. Like, I'm, I'm just following you in this way, and all of a sudden, like, boom, like, oh, thanks. Boom, whoa, thanks, you know? So, so watch this. As, as, I'm, as I'm following Jesus, as I'm talking to, to, to God about everything, here's what he's teaching me inside of that. He's teaching me to talk to Nicole about more and more things. And it's helping our relationship. Isn't that, isn't that kind of neat how, how he does that? In every crazy, busy marriage, we must remember this. You can't love your husband or wife like Jesus has called us to, right? And you can't experience all the blessings that God has for you in your marriage. Or that you can't, it, it's impossible to have those things and receive those things and walk in them and, and enjoy them. It's impossible if you don't, listen, listen, Put your mask on first. You got to get that oxygen for yourself. You have to do that first. Now, here's where it gets really exciting. Because once you got your own mask on, now you're in a position to help your spouse with their mask too. Now, let's, let's dive in just a little bit. We're going to kind of reread just a small section from Ephesians 5. Um, and, and then we're going to kind of just, by God's grace, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, extract just some more beauty and truth, all right? So let's start in verse number 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy. Somebody say holy. Holy, there we go. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her, can we say that together? To present her mm, to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives. See, Jesus is helping his spouse to get ready. He's helping her to get ready for eternity. He's helping his spouse. Jesus is helping the church to be holy. And if you're married, I know the text says husbands do this, right? One interpretation, definitely talking about husbands doing this for their wives, but many applications, right? So this applies to wives being able to do this for their husbands as well. If you're married, you have an opportunity to follow Jesus in this. If you're married, you have an opportunity to help your spouse prepare for eternity. You can help them to be holy, right? Because he or she will very soon, it's gonna go like this, very soon, they're going to be standing before Jesus, giving account for their lives, right? How did you live your life? How did you love like me in life, but certainly in your marriage as well? And when they're standing before Jesus on that day, those are the things that are going to matter. And in fact, nothing else is going to matter more in those moments. Now, now just imagine that. Imagine seeing your spouse, maybe, maybe from a, a great distance, maybe from a short distance. I don't know how close or far we'll, we'll be able to be if we can even see this happen. But just imagine seeing your spouse stand before Jesus, 
God himself, King of kings, Lord of lords, standing before Jesus, God Almighty, eyes like fire, body blazing, burning like bronze and more brilliant than the sun. And your wife is standing there, your husband is standing there before him, giving account for their lives. Oh, that I would be able to hear Nicole, or hear Jesus say this to Nicole, rather. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of your master. Well, I want, I want to help Nicole get ready for that day. I want to do everything I can to help her to be holy and to prepare for eternity. How can I do that? We should be asking ourselves, how can we do that for our spouse? There's nothing more important. Now, for many couples, they have found reading the Bible together, like actually getting in the Word together and reading it, it's been a great blessing. Here's some variations of how to do that, which might work well for us because every relationship is just a little bit different, right? If you go on the Bible app, right, I mentioned that again, you gotta get the Bible app if you don't have it. Anyways, just saying, like, on the Bible app, there's devotional plans or reading plans that you can do together. Now, I can be on my phone, Nicole can be on her phone, right, and, but we can do the plan together even if we're in different places. And you can have discussions afterwards in person or you can just make comments on the app. If your life is crazy busy, that's gonna come in really, really handy. All right, another way to get into the word together is by joining a small group. We've got Think Ahead small groups starting in October. Now, if you guys were, if, you know, you and your spouse, if you were to join a Think Ahead small group, I'm telling you, that would be fox-tastic. I'm just saying, all right? Now, here's another thing. Not only getting in the word together, but, but when husbands and wives pray together, what a great blessing that is and what a difference it makes, not only in your spiritual life, but, but in your relationship as well. See, you can go for prayer walks in the neighborhood. You might be going for walks already, and if you're not, maybe, hey, let's, let's take a walk together. That, that could be a really good thing for your relationship. But when you're on that walk, maybe just pray together too, like out loud. That would be a great opportunity to do that. If you've never done it, it's gonna be super weird the first time, all right? It's like super weird, okay? It's, it's gonna take some intention to make it happen, okay? But after you do it a couple times, it's like, oh, this isn't, this isn't that bad, actually, and it's not that weird anymore, okay? So, but you can go on prayer walks together. Um, here's another thing you can do if, if you go to bed at the same time, and maybe you don't, all right? But if you do, you can pray in bed together. Now, I have a very dear friend that said this, uh, and I'm encouraging you to take him up on this challenge. He said, it's really hard to stay mad at your husband or wife if you're laying in bed holding hands praying together. So I want you to put that theory to the test. All right? But praying together, listen, again, it's going to improve your marriage, but it's also going to help you to prepare for that day. It's going to help your spouse to prepare for that day. And again, it's going to be a great blessing to your relationship. And it's, help, it's going to help you to think about God and walk with him throughout your day. Some other ideas are go on date nights or weekend getaways together. I mean, when was the last time you've been on a weekend getaway together? It might have been a long time ago. All right, it's time to do that. Right? Share a meal or a sunset together. How cool would that be? Wow, and, and while you're sharing that time, whatever it looks like, when you're sharing that time together, have a conversation about Jesus. Like, what's going on in your life? All right? Like, what, what have you seen God doing in your life? And just have that discussion. All right, or, or remember, remember that crazy sermon last week? And like, what did you think about that? That was, you know? Like, you could have that conversation. You could even say this, like, when, when you're out to dinner, for example. Like, like, how can I serve you? All right, what can I do to help you today? Now, the first thing that's going to happen, your spouse is going to look at you and say, who are you? All right, they're going to recognize you like, man, you've been going to Fox River and you've been taking those sermons seriously, okay? But, but that would be just a great blessing, right? How can I pray for you today? How can I pray for you at this meal? Like, I mean, wow, what a difference that could make to help them prepare for eternity and, and to improve the state of your marriage. Wow, that would be awesome. All right, hey, let's get back to that, that date night idea. What if you were to make Tuesday night your date night and go to re-engage here at the South Campus, all right? Now, if you're not familiar with what re-engage is, Reengage is Fox River's marriage ministry. And this has saved many marriages from the very brink of divorce. It's rescued relationships. Hear me when I say it. Definitely true. And then marriages who are kind of like, you know, rocking it already, good marriages, um, it has done a lot. Reengage has done a lot to help those marriages get even better. Dare I say, great. Now, if in your marriage some of these ideas don't work, I would fully expect that, okay? All marriages are different, different dynamics, different people, all, all of that's in play, right? 
maybe nothing on the list that we just kind of ran through. None of those things work. Here's your homework assignment, and I encourage you to do this, all right? Very much so. Find something. Find one way to help your spouse prepare for eternity. Find one way to help your spouse to put their mask on. You know, just kidding, all right. <laughs> find, find one way to help them in their, in their faith. Now, maybe, maybe it won't work in your marriage for a different reason. For, may, maybe your husband or your wife, they're not a believer right now, okay? Um, they're just not interested in God. Maybe, maybe your husband or your wife is not interested in God for a different reason, because they are a believer, but they're just kind of, and I wish this doesn't happen, but, but it happens to all of us, I think, um, at least a couple times, uh, is, is you kind of drift away from God. You just kind of get in these, these funks or this season, and you're just kind of drifting, right? And, and I just don't want anything to do with God right now, all right? Um, maybe, maybe that's the reason that some of these won't work. So what, what can you do in that situation when, when you gave me a list, but none of them work, here's what you can do. Submit. Submit to the needs of your spouse. And here's what they need. They need you to love like Jesus. They need to see, they need to hear Jesus in your words. They need to see Jesus in your actions and your love toward them. Let your life be a witness of Christ to them. And then, and then here's the last piece, and this is critical. This is so difficult sometimes, especially on, when it comes to the details. You gotta trust. You gotta trust in the Holy Spirit, knowing that he is working on your spouse. And if they're a believer, he's working in your spouse. He's making their heart just squishy and soft and moldable once again because it's a little bit harder than it should be right now. You just gotta trust God. I'm doing my part, you're doing your part. In the same way that Ephesians chapter 5 is Jesus-centered. God says, I want for your marriage to be Jesus-centered as well. Because that's where the biggest blessings are. That's where the deepest joy is located and found. That's where the peace, even in the crazy busyness of your imperfect marriage, that's where peace can be discovered and enjoyed God's greatest gift no question about it God's greatest gift to those who are married especially crazy busy married people is this a Christ centered marriage now for many of us our next step is going to be how can I do a better job of getting my own mask on for many of us it's going to be how can I help my spouse to grow in their faith and, and help them to put their mask on because we need oxygen here. But for some of us, at Fox River today, like this weekend, for some of us, our next step is simply this. It's receiving Jesus for the very first time. Remember, you can't give. We said this a couple times. We'll say it again. You can't give what you don't have for yourself. You can't love like him if you don't know him as Savior quite yet. If you've not yet received Jesus as Savior, today is the day. Today's the day where you put your oxygen mask on for the very first time. And if you do, and I hope you do, brace yourself, get ready. Because your life, your world, and certainly your marriage is about to change in some really wonderful ways. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, that you care about us and you care about our relationship with our spouse, those of us who are married. Holy Spirit, help us to make that connection between faith and marriage, that they wouldn't be two separate things, but God, that we would see them as you see them. These things are connected. God, help us to choose to love you just as you love us. God, for those coming to you for the very first time, Give them exactly what they need. Give them exactly what they yearn and hope for. For the sake of their soul, but also for the sake of their spouse's eternity, Lord. Give them those things as they enter into right relationship with you. If you'd like to receive Jesus for the first time, no matter what campus you're at, online, I'm talking to you too. If you want to receive Jesus for the very first time, let's pray this prayer of salvation together right now. Lord Jesus, I've sinned against you and I'm in need of your forgiveness 
and your grace. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you, three days later, you rose from the grave for my life. And I'm trusting in you, Lord Jesus, to save me and to make me new. I receive you, Jesus, right here, right now, as Savior. Thank you. Help me to live my life for you. If you receive Jesus, right, eyes still closed, heads still bowed. If you receive Jesus, would you just raise your hand, lift, lift it up just real quick wherever you're at. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Any others? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. So good to us, God. We will never stop praising you for that. Be glorified, Lord, this week. Like, I, I pray that the things we talked about, God, the working that you've done in our very hearts today, that it wouldn't be in vain. God, that we would, this week, choose to live for you and to love like you. Be glorified in our hearts and in our lives, we pray from this point forward. Amen.